So here is, here's Dirt's top five Millennium episodes. And like I said, ask me again in six months and uh, some of this list may change. But uh, I think spots one and two are pretty well cemented. But let's start with number five. What's number five on Dirt's list? Well, number five is actually a first season episode, Powers, Principalities, Thrones, and Dominions. Now, this is kind of the follow-up episode to Lamentations with Lucy Butler. And Lucy Butler does make a small appearance in this episode, just briefly. But the reason why I picked this one over Lamentations is that this really opens up the world of Millennium to much more of that struggle between good and evil versus angels and demons and Satan and God and all of that kind of really deep philosophical stuff. This is really where I think it, it, it grabbed a hold of the Millennium Mythos and didn't let go. And this is one of those episodes that it just kind of says that, you know, if you're going to admit that there's really evil things out there, you also have to admit that there's some really great things in there. So if the devil exists, God has to exist. And I think that's kind of a, a fun little message for them to put out there to really kind of, you know, so many people focus on the dark and you have to have that light in order to balance it out. But again, tough picking between Lamentation and, uh, you know, Powers, Principalities, Thrones, and Dominions, but, eh, you know, I, I, I could I, I could see your point of picking the other one. I'm not going to fight you too much on that one. Number four, Midnight of the Century. Now, this one, we're probably going to talk in more detail here as Christmas time approaches, but Midnight of the Century is the Christmas-themed episode where we get a really great look at Frank Black's childhood what his life was like, what his family structure is like, and then seeing how his life and things that are happening to him with the Millennium Group and with his gift and everything like that is starting to affect his relationship with his daughter and how Jordan and the way she's kind of struggling with her emerging gift, uh, you know, is kind of mirrored in the way Frank had to deal with that. And so Frank's understanding of what his family went through when he was young helps him to develop a better relationship with his daughter and what she's going through. And I think it's just, it's one of those that the final moments of the episode really just kind of tear your heart apart. And uh, it, it's just one of those where, you know, I, I, I probably tear up a little bit every year. <laughs> I'm getting to be an old softy. All right. Number three. This is one we just talked about here in this video series, The Curse of Frank Black. You know, watching it again brought back all the memories of why I love that episode so much. There's so much to talk about in that episode, which luckily I've already done. So if you want to hear about it, you can go check that out. But Halloween episode, it's a great episode, a lot of neat stuff, a lot of great uh, you know, Millennium Beats get hit in this one from, you know, what's really the goal of the Millennium Group to who's trying to talk to him from, you know, is it God, is it the devil, is it demons, you know, what what's he really dealing with here? A lot of neat stuff going on, and I really like that one. Now, my number two spot is actually kind of a cheat, but uh, Troy Foreman said I could get away with it, so you got a problem, you can take it up with him. I think Rhonda backed me up on this one, too. Owls and Roosters in my number two spot. Yeah, it's two episodes, but you know what? They go back to back. It's a two-part episode, so you really can't single out one part of the episode and not do the other one. And my gosh, did this blow my mind when I was watching the show originally. I was in college, so I may not have been completely sober at the time, you know, and uh, it has a little more effect on me than maybe it should have, but oh man, did this snap my brain in two. Everything about the Millennium Group about their involvement in international politics, their involvement in religion, their involvement in, you know, prophecy and uh, biblical truths and archaeological history. And, oh, my gosh, it, it's like, I don't know, it's like 17 different National Geographic and Discovery Channel uh, specials mixed up in this great story of dealing with, uh, you know, who are these other groups that the Millennium Group may fight with? Um, you know, remnants of the Nazi regimes and whatnot. But, I mean, gosh, within the Millennium Group, there's a great divide. There's this religious sect and the scientific sect, and they're fighting with each other. And, and there's so many things in this two-part episode that if they started right now on a Millennium movie, they could use those threads to set up the perfect storyline for next year. So if there's any reason why you're holding out on doing a Millennium movie, 20th Century Fox, if you happen to be listening, 
I want to hear your excuses because this is the time. The time is now. And here's where your storyline is going to begin. So I didn't put that as my number one spot, my, my, my number one favorite episode. That, that didn't make number one. So, hmm, what could I possibly pick for number one? Yeah, it's the Mikado. Oh my gosh. Now they recently uh, stole, <laughs> I don't know exactly what the involvement of this episode was in the movie Untraceable, but it's there. Uh, you can see this episode all over that movie. And, you know, the movie's not too bad as a standalone thing. But this episode, for me, being the nerd that I am, being into the type of things I am, you know, at the time I was in college when this episode came out, and, you know, we had just gotten our high-speed uh, ISDN lines. We were pulling up, uh, you know, a full 128K download speed. It was awesome. And so here's this episode that it's technology-centric, You've got this guy dealing with websites, there's IP addresses, they're, they're pulling out packets and whatever, and, and all of it worked. Like every time they would bring up something that's technology, I'm so used to shows where, where they go, hey, can you enhance this part of the screen? And the people go, sure, and they go tick, 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 on the keyboard, and you see the little mouse pointer come in and zoom in on something, and it's like, how? It's like they're not even thinking about the technology being involved, and, and this, this got it right. Not only that, but there's great stuff in there with Rodecker and Watts and some of the stuff that they deal with, their conversations, their dialogue. There's also this great segment where they're, they're trying to track down the killer, so they're in different parts of the country. So Frank's sitting there with a satellite uplink, and he's trying to get in the mind of the killer. And not being there, being disconnected, is having a hard time with his gift. He, he can't really get a read on it. And, and it's gory. There's decapitated heads being found. There's people being murdered, uh, uh, you know, on these websites. Uh, I, I mean, it's just, it's great. And the music and everything, oh, gosh. I mean, that's, why am I talking to you guys? You know what? I'm going to go watch that episode again right now. In fact, uh, where's my... Yeah. Eh, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm going to go watch the episode. I'm going to pull it out right now because... That is my all-time favorite episode.